Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today, we're going to be taking a look at animating a still frame so that it looks like it was actually video shot from a helicopter or possibly a hot air balloon with helicopter sound effects. But either way, here is what we're trying to achieve. So I'm going to take a look here. Okay, so we've got uh, a lot of different things going on. We've got some grime on the lens. We've got a little camera wiggle. We've also got a little bit of a parallax so that it looks like we're flying a bit. And the smoke is also moving ever so slightly. Plus we have these little micro particles of ash falling. Now here's another example, a little bit simpler. So you can just see the parallax that makes it look like it's actually video. So let's go and take a look at creating this effect and I'm sure you're going to find some interesting techniques within. All right, so here we are in After Effects and I have this volcano picture of a volcano that will remain nameless for the sake of not embarrassing myself and we're going to drop it into the new comp button. So we have our video here but the first thing we need to do is paint it out so that we can have a clean plate in the background. So what we're going to do is click on this stamp tool. We're going to double click on our image and uh, we'll hit the tilde key or actually let's take a look at our brushes. First we want the hardness to be at zero. We want the duration to be constant and uh, just a big nice soft brush. We'll hit uh, let's see the tilde key. We'll zoom in here and uh, a couple of tips here. If you hold down control and you left mouse click and just drag you can make a variable size brush and then what we're going to do is hold down alt sample an area and then we're going to start painting that area And as we do we'll sort of get rid of uh, our clouds here this is uh, what we want to do and then we'll come over here and uh, just start painting this out Okay, so this should be good for now. We just want to get rid of the main part of the smoke. This looks good. Um, we don't need it to be perfect because the clouds are going to block it out. Although you can go into Photoshop and uh, you know clean it up. All right, so now we have our clean plate. So what I want to do is create an animation that makes it look like there's actual 3D space here. Now we're not actually going to be doing camera projection, but I invite you to take a look at the technique. Type in projection on our blog and uh, there's a lot of cool tips and a lot of cool reference videos that you might want to take a look at. All right, we're back in After Effects. We're going to duplicate our volcano layer. We can choose Edit, Duplicate and we'll go to the effects and we're just going to delete the paint and we're just back to the beginning. And then I'm going to take the pen tool. We're going to come in here and we're basically going to select this uh, smoke. Now you probably want this to be pretty refined and pretty tight but just for this tutorial we're going to just do a you know pretty good job. We're going to rough it out here. All right. Bingo. So now we've basically recreated our image. Now I'm going to go ahead and soften it so we'll hit F, hide the mask and uh, we'll just turn this up a little bit. Maybe we could hit M and bring the expansion to a negative number. Just something that uh, looks looks good. Okay. All right, so that looks pretty good. Now what we want to do is give this a little bit of a parallax. So here's the basic idea of what we're going to be trying to create. So if we take a look at this example you can see we have like a 3D movement going on where the foreground is moving faster than the background. And you can see that the background sort of parallaxes right here because we can't see what's behind here. But as we move forward, it sort of becomes revealed. And although it's subtle, our minds kind of pick up on that and can, you know, figure out things spatially. So we want to basically create that effect. So how we're going to do that is actually pretty simple. We'll take our volcano clean plate. We'll choose effect distort corner pin. And uh, 
Basically, what I want to do is grab the bottom left corner. We'll go and keyframe all of these. So we'll grab the bottom left corner. We'll drag it over till about right there. And then the top here, we're going to drag it over about half that distance. So about right there. And we'll move forward about four seconds or so. We could do more. We could do less. And uh, we'll go and reset. And we'll do the same thing to the opposite side. So we'll drag this over and this one to about half that distance. Now you can go into the keyframes and try to make it exact, but uh, this should just get us pretty close. So now you can see we've created that parallaxing effect. However, our volcano is uh, not moving properly. So what we need to do is hit P, keyframe the position, move forward to that four second mark, and we just want to go ahead and realign the smoke Okay, so that looks pretty good, and we have just that slight parallaxing effect, and uh, this should just give us exactly what we need. All right, so now we have our parallax animation, and next I want to add some movement into the smoke, but instead of applying the same movement to everything, I'm actually going to duplicate a second copy of the smoke layer. So if we solo that, I'm going to take the pen tool, and we're going to refine it a bit. Basically, I'm looking for a natural break in the smoke where I can have a separate layer that will then overlap as it moves. And remember, with the smoke, we want to have more animation near the source and slower the further it gets away. What I'm going to do with the pen tool is isolate this puffy part of the smoke. So we'll go in here, we'll just start drawing the shape. Let's see here. Okay, so we're going to hit M, select the first mask, and then hit delete. So now we just have that one puffy part. So we'll go and bring this down. We'll take the top part, and we'll choose Effect, Distort, Liquify. Okay, what we're going to do, select the bottom layer, hit U, and then we're going to move over to four seconds in time. And we're going to take the top layer. And what I want to do is animate the distortion mesh. So we'll go ahead, click on the stopwatch, and that's going to set a keyframe at four seconds. We'll also go down to the very beginning, and we'll also set another keyframe. So we have two keyframes. We'll go to the end here, and then we can start playing around with the liquify tools. So we'll start discussing them as we uh, click on them. Uh, we have the twirl tools. Uh, we can click on this one. The brushes work a lot like the clone brush. If you hold down control and drag left and right, you can change the size. So what I'm going to do with the twirl brush is just start spinning the clouds a little bit so that it looks like they're, uh, you know, pluming outward. And we can make large movements and... Uh, you know, and just play around. I mean, the smoke doesn't have to move all in one direction. You can, uh, you know, vary the brushes. We just want to make sure that we give a little bit of movement to everything. And then we can play around with just the drag tool and just start moving some of these pieces outward. Because remember, the smoke is getting bigger and uh, we want it to also be moving upwards. Now there's another cool tool called the bulge tool and that will just kind of puff out areas of the smoke and uh, that looks kind of cool. So if we scrub through this we can kind of see the smoke moving. Now I probably want to add a little bit more sort of rotation down here at the bottom. And you know, if you make a mistake and you want to start over, if it's just not looking right or it's looking too distorted, just go to that four second keyframe, hit reset, and just start over again. I mean, it's a very, you know, fluid process and you really have, um, you know, a lot of control. So we can just start moving this stuff around until we, uh, you know, get something that we like. And the other cool thing here is that by moving this on a separate layer, it's intersecting with the background layer. 
So we'll take the second copy. We'll choose Effect, Distort, Liquify. We'll go to the beginning. We'll set a keyframe for the distortion mesh. We'll move forward to four seconds and uh, we'll start playing around with some of these tools. So first we'll just take like the drag tool here and we'll just start moving our smoke around. We just want to make sure we move all of the smoke. Maybe bulge out some of the smoke here in the middle. And again, we can start twirling it a little bit. I like to twirl the edges so that really get uh, you know a unique look. You know, and then we want to be careful here. We don't want to reveal the area that we've cut out. So if we need to, we can just drag this in a little bit so that we don't see that sort of ghosting duplication. Okay, this is looking pretty good. We'll go to half res here so we can kind of see it a little bit better. Now remember, we also animated this. So what we could do is take the two top layers here and hit P and actually move the layers up. So that's just going to create a little bit more of a growing outward effect. And uh, let's just preview this and let's take a look so you guys can kind of compare, you know, checkpoints. All right, that looks pretty good. I mean, you know, with a little bit more tweaking with the liquify, I think we could, uh, you know, add some more random noise, but this is going to be great for this demonstration. Now, another quick thing we can do to make this look even better is we take that top part, hit S, bring up the scale, set a keyframe, and we'll move forward to the four second area. And what we can do is scale it up, like maybe one, 112, and that just makes it a lot bigger. And now when we take a look at it, it creates a much more dramatic effect. So just remember, things that are far away and big shouldn't move too fast. So just be careful that you're not overdoing it. We want it to be subtle and uh, trust that the audience is going to pick up on all of your hard work. And if they don't, well, we'll just have to punch their mouth loose. Okay, moving on, what I'm going to do is pre-compose our volcano. And we'll choose layer, pre-compose, and we'll call this uh, volcano video. And we'll hit OK. And then we're going to create a camera. So we'll choose layer, new, camera. And we'll make it uh, like a 50 millimeter, hit OK. We're also going to make sure our volcano video is a 3D layer. And uh, what's next? Let's add a light into our scene. So we'll create a new light. It'll be a point light, 100% intensity, and we'll hit OK. Now, I want to make sure that our background video isn't being affected by our light. So we'll hit AA, and we'll click Accept Lights Off. So there you go. And we'll take our light, we'll hit P, we'll set the Z position to zero. And we're going to move the light over here to the left. All right, next we're going to add a video copilot lens flare. Now, you don't have to do this step, or you can use the standard lens flare, but uh, I do recommend uh, optical flares. It's a really cool plugin, and uh, hopefully, you'll see why in just a moment. All right, let's create a new solid, and uh, we'll hit OK. We'll choose Effect, Video Copilot, Optical Flares. And we're going to go into the options. And this is the new Optical Flares 1.2 interface that actually allows you to resize windows and it'll go full screen. You can toggle the windows on and off here. And uh, it's actually uh, pretty handy. Um, you can also move the windows around. So I could, you know, I could put this, say, below here um, and just get a perfect configuration. Um, but anyway, what I want to do is come over here to the presets. We're going to click on light, scroll down here. I'm going to add the sun digital. This is actually recreated from the end scene of Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. So when they look up at the sun um, near the pyramids, this is kind of the lens flare that was created. So we're going to add that. And we're actually going to combine two lens flares. So we have the crazy light here. We're going to right click on that 
and choose add to current. And those combine together to create a lot of interesting stuff. Now I am going to delete the second glow that was created. So we'll just click delete and that way it's not too much brighter than original. So we'll shut the browser off and uh, I think that's good to go. We'll go ahead and hit OK. All right, so now we have our lens flare, but I want to position it on our 3D light. So we come over here, positioning mode, we set that to track lights and instantly that light is now controlling it in 3D space. So the cool thing here is that we can take the layer, hit F4, change the transfer mode to screen, which is a, you know, a good way to do it. You can also change the uh, render mode to on transparent to get a similar result. Now, just a quick tip with optical flares, you can actually duplicate lights and have multiple lens flares going on. So if you're creating like a concert scene or some sort of planet that has two suns and every time it gets dark, the sun comes up again and you just can't get any sleep, it's maddening. Um, sounds like a pretty good movie, um, maybe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the light over off to the side here. And I'm also going to take our optical flares layer. We'll choose effect color correction curves. So I want to just give it a little bit of contrast here. So we'll just uh, bring this down a bit and maybe even add a little bit of warmth to it in the red channel. We'll go to the blue channel and bring this down too. So we can change the color of the flare, but you know, color correction is also a good way to do that. And what's nice about this image is it has a really defined light source coming from the side as you can see in the smoke. So just going to really look uh, nice. Now in the optical flares we want to do a couple of things. First we want to turn on the flicker. So we want to turn the speed up to about 20 and the amount up to about 25. And what that's going to do is just give us a little bit of a, of a variation so that, you know, it just has a much more natural look. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is add some particles to create some ash. So we're going to create a new solid, hit OK, and we're going to use the simulation particle world effect. And this effect comes with After Effects. And uh, we'll go to off for the grid so we just see particles. Go to the producer here. We're going to make it really, really large. And we're just turning up the X and Y um, and Z radius so that it's just a big square. Now for the physics, we want to turn the velocity down maybe to 0.1 and the gravity to about 0.05. We want these particles to fall very slowly. And uh, that looks pretty good. So we'll go to the particle settings. We're going to set it from a line to a faded sphere. And let's see, we'll move up here. Set the longevity to about three seconds. And we'll go to the options also. Click on rendering and turn on force motion blur. Now I understand that in CS5 these options do not um, come up anymore and I have no idea why. So Hopefully that will be fixed soon, um, but I do know for the motion blur, you you can turn on the motion blur switch on the layer, and for the comp, and that will actually turn it on. So it saves you a step, but you know there's a lot of good options in here. So I'm sure there is a um, a fix coming forthwith. So that's something to look forward to. So we'll slide this over here. I'm going to set the mode to screen, and we'll uncheck that. Now we're going to move down here. We want the size of these particles to be very, very small. So we'll just slide this over and I'll make them a little bit bigger for the tutorial, but on your own, you may want to make them even smaller so that, uh, you know, they're just barely visible. They just want to seem like bits uh, of ash and not rain or something like that. So we'll even turn this gravity 0.01, make it even slower, almost like they're suspended there. And then if we come up to the size, if we make the radius higher, we can possibly get them to be closer to the camera. And, you know, the birth rate and how many there are is, uh, you know, that's up to you. 
there should be exactly 561,000. So just make sure that uh, you're close. All right, we have an interesting situation. We have 3D particles, we have a 3D camera, and we even have a 3D lens flare. But our video is actually a 2D processed image. And even though it looks like there's a camera move, there's actually no real 3D data. So what we need to do is trick the camera to actually move so the particles look like they're actually in that 3D camera space. So let me show you what I'm talking about. First, let's create a new null object. And we'll hit return. We'll call this cam control. We'll make it a 3D layer and we'll put it above the camera. Then we'll take the camera and we'll parent it to the cam control layer. Then if we take that layer, hit P, set a keyframe, we'll move forward to four seconds. And we basically want to move it to the left so that the particles move left to right. Now we have a slight problem that is our background video layer is actually moving as well. So we need to compensate for that. So we'll hit P. Let's set a keyframe at the beginning. We'll go to the end and we'll just go ahead and move it back into place. So that should uh, fix that. But if you look closely, the particles are now moving in 3D space. In fact, the lens flare is actually getting closer to the scene as well. So we probably want to you know, move that further in Z space. We don't actually want the uh, light source to be moving around too much. But now we actually get that little bit of 3D parallax in our particles. Now another thing we can do is take our volcano video. Let's scale it up a bit. Let's just uh, scale it up just a touch. And if we look closely, um, we can see that the center of the screen is about right here and our volcano is just off center. So what if we move it over just a bit so that it is in the center? And if we move to the end, let's take our video and let's slide it back over so that it's again in the center, almost like stabilizing. Well, watch what that does. It almost creates an orbiting effect as if the camera is orbiting right around that position. Now we don't want it to be as extreme. We don't want it to be perfect. But uh, you know, if we do slide that a bit, you just get a little bit more um, you know, control over where you're focusing your eyes. Okay, next we want to add some handheld camera movement. So we can use a simple expression on the position of the cam control. So we could hit Alt, click on the uh, stopwatch. We can type wiggle, maybe 1, 15. And we could even go into the rotation of the camera. Uh, let's see on the Z axis here. We could do Alt, click on that. We type wiggle maybe 0.5 comma 5. And this may be too much, but you can see we just have a little bit of movement. And even to the camera position, we are in a helicopter, so we could add a little bit of vibration. We can alt click on the position of the camera. We could do wiggle maybe 9 comma 2. And, and that should just give us you know, some, some more uh, vibration as well. This is sort of the all digital solution to adding, um, you know, a handheld feel. And you just play with the different values to create, you know, a different variable look. But there's another idea, and that is we take footage that you actually filmed, motion track it, and then use that data for the actual camera. So you're actually getting a real camera uh, man feel in sort of a digital world. So the way we're gonna do that, we just take the footage here, we drop it into a new comp, and we're just going to you know, find an area here. I think uh, we just need to do four seconds or so, and we'll track it. So we'll choose Window Tracker. We'll click Track Motion. We're gonna track the motion of the position and the rotation. We could do the scale, but I'll go ahead and skip that for now. And we'll take one of the points here, move it up here. 
And we'll move this one over here. And we'll come down here and we'll click track motion forward. And it looks like that tracked pretty good. So we'll create a null object. And we'll click edit target. And we're going to apply the motion to the null. Hit OK. And we'll click apply. And we'll apply it to the X and Y. Hit OK. So now we have a null object with some real camera movement on it. So we'll take that layer. We'll uh, see. We'll copy it. Come over here to our volcano. And we'll go to the beginning here and we'll paste it. And we'll put it just above uh, the cam control. Now I do need to go back in the cam control, shut those expressions off. So we'll just uncheck those. We can leave them there just in case we change our mind about this and we want a digital cameraman. Um, but assuming we do, we'll just leave that in place. We'll take our, let's see, our null object. This is our real cam movement. And if we hit uh, U, we can see all that tracking data. So we'll slide it over. And basically, we'll take the cam control here and we'll parent it to the real camera movement. And so now, we should have a very, uh, very rugged, very natural looking movement. Now remember, the footage that we just tracked was full HD resolution. So what that means is the movement might be a little bit too much for this SD comp. So let's go ahead, unparent it for just a moment. We'll go into the position, we'll alt click on it, and we'll take the value here and we'll add star 0.5. And what that's gonna do is multiply it um, by half. So it's gonna have half as much movement. So if we look, we'll turn that expression on. You see the motion path right here? Solo that layer. You can see the motion path right here kind of moves around. If we take, uh, maybe we'll do 1.5 and we select it. So now you can see the motion path is kind of large. We could do just one and the motion path is smaller. We could do 0.25 and the motion path is even smaller. So the idea is just to create the size that matches um, the feel and the look of the camera. All right, so that's looking pretty good. You can see um, the framing does go out just a little bit, so we may want to just move our background plate. Um, we could hit A, bring the anchor point down just so that we don't uh, cut out of the frame, and we can also slide it over and even scale it up a little bit more too if we need to, but we don't want to scale it up too much. But you can really see the, the natural movement in the real camera as opposed to with uh, just using the expression. So it's a really good idea to, uh, to do that. All right, let's go ahead and just do a few final touches here. Let's add an adjustment layer on top. And maybe we'll turn our uh, optical flare scale up just a little bit. Um, move our light down and... Uh, Let's add some color correction. So we'll just add a curves adjustment as well as a little bit of noise for some grain. So we'll just add a little bit of contrast. And we'll add about 4% uh, noise so that it looks a little bit more like video and that it's um, animating. Um, and that might be a little too dark. Let's. Play with that a bit. Okay. And again, like I said, the particles should be a lot smaller and there should probably be a lot less of them. But if I don't make them large here, you may not be able to see them in the tutorial. Now, if you go into the optical flares directory, for those who have optical flares, there's a texture folder. There's glass elements. And these are actually PNG images, HD res. We can actually just grab them, import them, and use them in our comp. So this one we'll just bring out here and it's just a nice looking uh, texture. We could just uh, take a look here. It's a nice little texture. You can screenshot that if, uh, if you need to. Um, and what I'm gonna do is set the transfer mode to screen 
and we'll add a curves adjustment here just to give it a little contrast and maybe even add a little warmth because if it's dirt on the glass it's probably getting the warmth from the scene as well so if we match that that should be good um, now a couple things here we could let's see we could darken this down so it's very subtle now in the original example there was like a big rack focus change so we could do that say we'll do another adjustment layer and we'll call this rack focus and we'll put it below the smudge and we'll add a quick box blur you could also use the lens blur but this is a lot faster and basically we're gonna create like a fake rack focus so we'll turn the blur up a bit and we'll move forward and we'll set this down to zero so we just made a quick animation of the of the focus and we're gonna do the same thing to the smudge layer so we'll add the box blur and we'll set it at zero and then we'll move forward and we'll set it to you know, 20 or so and then we'll also fade it out so we'll hit T set a keyframe um, so we'll move that one over and we'll set it to zero so we're basically we're taking the layer and we're blurring it and fading it out like that and then the rack focus is working on the background image so just a subtle little fade in um, between the lens and and the background so it's a fun little thing and one other thing you can do is for let's see if we go into the transform here let's see we'll do distort transform and what we could do is we could turn the scale up to like 105 and then move it over and set it back to 100 and one of the things that you see is that when the focus goes out the focus plane changes and the image sort of enlarges with with a lot of lenses and it doesn't happen on all lenses but it's kind of an interesting um, effect and let's see if we were to take all of our keyframes here and um, let's just copy them for for each layer so paste those and then we'll paste those so just copy paste and then we'll flip the order and then maybe just for good measure we'll we'll copy let's see the beginning ones and the end ones so that it blurs out and then it blurs it's like like a quick out of focus moment or something like that but you can see it kind of zooms in there while it finds the focus and we can maybe um, hold down control click to give it uh, kind of a smooth curve so I mean this is something you want to play around with um, faking the focus can be you know it can be a little extreme sometimes I think you know in the initial example I you know the goal was essentially you know taking two seconds of the animation and the focus was to hide the illusion that you know everything was being distorted so it was more of a, of a cheat so here now that our shots a little bit longer I don't think we necessarily need it but uh, you know it's uh, it's an interesting look let's go ahead and just take a look at uh, at this effect and uh, hopefully your guys' looks uh, similar or even better hopefully All right, well, I think there's a lot of things going on in this tutorial. Don't feel like you have to do everything to sell the effect. Sometimes just the simpler, more subtle thing is the way to go. Um, and, and also think about real footage. You know, try to match actual footage. You know, not all footage looks, um, you know, crazy. Now, another thing I have here is some rapid footage where the camera is a lot shakier. Um, and although it may not be practical for this example you might experiment with various um, you know shots and, and various effects just to see how much more natural it looks to use a real live plate as your camera source instead of uh, mathematical uh, expression so alright well I had a lot of fun putting this together and uh, hopefully you guys uh, learned some interesting things I am Andrew Kramer and we will see you next time
It's like one in the morning. I'm going to bed. <laughs>